So on this slide, we're going to be talking about two properties of definite integrals. The first property states that if you're taking the definite integral of a function that has a constant in front, as indicated by this k here, then you're going to be allowed to move the constant out in front of the definite integral. And this is something that we've seen before in other things that have to do with calculus, this idea of taking the constant and moving it out in front. Now the second property states that if you're taking the definite integral of a multi-termed function, you can break that up into the definite integral of each term of that multi-termed function. Let's take a look at an example problem that will implement some of these different properties. Evaluate each integral using the following values. The definite integral of x squared from 3 to 6 is 63. The definite integral of x from 3 to 6 is 13.5 and the definite integral of 1 dx from 3 to 6 is 3. So I want you to think of these three things as your clues. Okay, number 11. Evaluate the definite integral of x squared from 6 to 6. Well, this one requires absolutely no work because it subscribes to one of our earlier properties. The lower and upper limits of integration are the same value. So the area under this curve, this parabola, from 6 to 6, would have no width, which means we have an overall area of 0. Looking at example 13, this is the definite integral of 10 from 3 to 6. Now 10 is a constant, so I can move that constant out in front and call this 10 times the definite integral from 3 to 6 of dx. And then this just becomes our third clue our third clue reveals to us that this is equal to 3. So it's going to be 10 times 3, or 30. Number 15, we've got the definite integral of a multi-termed expression. So I'm going to split this up into two separate definite integrals. So to finish this problem, I need to realize that I've broken this into two of my separate clues. The first one is the definite integral of x from 3 to 6, which is revealed to us here. And then the second part is going to be 3 times the definite integral of x dx, which is revealed to us here at the end. So this first one is going to be 13.5. And then we're going to add on to that 3 times this guy here, which is defined to be 3. So it's really going to be 13.5 plus 9, or 22.5. And now we'll take a look at the last one. Again, we've got the definite integral of a multi-termed expression. Now each term is preceded by a constant, so when I split this up into three separate definite integrals, I'm going to write that constant out in front. Now I'm just going to look at my clues, and I'll be able to very quickly just substitute in the uh, known values. So this becomes one-third of this, which is one of my clues. It's the first one, and this is equal to 63. And then I'm going to do minus 2 times this one, which is also a clue, and that is 13.5. And finally, it's going to be 9, or minus 9, times this last clue, which is 3. Now, cleaning this up, I have 21, minus 27, minus 27. This is going to be negative 33. So in summary, on this slide, I've shown you uh, a specific type of problem that implements these properties that we've been learning on the last couple of slides. They're not too bad. They're actually pretty fun. Uh, you just have to look for your clues and know how to use them. Let's go on to slide number five. Okay, so on this fifth slide, we're going to take a look at a few more examples using these different properties of definite integrals. In number 18, we're given two clues, and that is that the area under the curve of f from 0 to 7 is equal to 4, and that the area under the curve of f from 7 to 10 is 1. So what I like to do in this problem is I like to draw a little bit of a picture now, keep in mind I don't know what f looks like exactly, so I'm just going to make something up, something amorphic, like a little amoeba, like this. Here's the graph of f from 0 to 7, and that area under that curve is supposed to be 4, so I'm going to put plus 4. The area under the curve of f from 7 to 10 is 1, so I'll do a smaller version of that, and this is 1 still the graph of f over here. And if we look at problem 18a, this can be interpreted as what is the area under the curve from 0 all the way to 10. So here's the curve of f, and if we go from 0 all the way to 10, it's really the combination of 4 and 1. 
So it's going to be 4 plus 1, or an area overall of 5. Part C, immediately I see that property that we learned on an earlier slide, where we're trying to find the area under a curve, beginning at 7 and ending at 7. Now this implies that there's no width to our region, which means that the overall area is going to be 0. Okay, let's take a look at example 19. In number 19, we're given a definite integral of f from 1 to 3, and its area is 6. And we're given another definite integral of g from 1 to 3, and its area is negative 2. Now, just real quick, negative area might seem like a very strange idea to you, but in the context of what we're doing now in calculus, this is going to mean that the region is under the x-axis. So what we're going to do in 19a is we're going to split this up because it's a multi-termed expression. So I'm going to split this up into two definite integrals. Now, we're just going to look at our clues to know what this is. The definite integral of f from 1 to 3 is defined to be 6. And the definite integral of g from 1 to 3 is negative 2. So it's really 6 plus a negative 2 for an overall area of 4. Looking at 19c, the first thing that I notice is that there's this constant 7 in front. And I know a constant can be written out in front. So I'm going to say negative 7 times the definite integral from 1 to 3 of the function g. And the function g is, of course, defined in one of our clues. So it's going to be negative 7 times negative 2 for an answer of 14. And now we'll go to our last question where they give us two new clues. Uh, the area under the curve of f from negative 2 to 5 is 0. Now that's a little weird. If the, if the area is 0, what exactly am I going to draw? I think I'm going to hold off on that for just a moment. Let's look at the second clue. The second clue says that the area under the curve of f from 2 to 5 is negative 4. So once again, we've got this idea of negative area, which means that the region is under the x-axis. So I'm going to draw this amorphic region, like an amoeba, under the x-axis, and I'm going to make its area negative 4. Now let's go back to the first clue. If the area under the curve of f from negative 2 to 5 is 0, there's a certain implication. And the implication would be that the area under the curve from negative 2 to 2 would have to counter this negative 4. Because if overall it's going to be 0, then this has to counter that. So this is going to end up having to be positive 4. In this way, the overall area from negative 2 to 5 would be the 0 that we're looking for. So in 20a, again, I've got this constant in front. So I'm going to write this as 6. 6 times the definite integral from 2 to 5 of the function f. So we're going to get 6, uh, 6 times negative 4 which is negative 24. And then if I look at 20c, we have to find the area under the curve of f from negative 2 to 2. And that can be answered easily by just looking at the schematic, the drawing that we came up with. And this is going to be an answer of 4. So on this slide, once again, I've shown you a few different examples of question types that might be used with respect to definite integrals and this concept that a definite integral represents the area under a curve over a given or a specified interval. Okay, so now we're on our sixth of six slides for definite integrals, and we're looking at question number 21. It says, the graph of f consists of line segments and two-quarter circles, as shown in the figure. Evaluate each definite integral by using geometric formulas. So in question A, we're asked to evaluate the definite integral of the graph of f from negative 2 to 0. So when I look at the graph of f from negative 2 to 0, the first thing that I notice is that the region is underneath the x-axis, which means my answer overall is going to be negative. So I'm starting at negative 2, and this region is bounded by the x-axis. So it's this little quarter circle here. And the area of a quarter circle is going to be pi r squared divided by 4. And the radius of this quarter circle is 2. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute that in. Now the 2 squared and the 4 are going to cancel out, so all I'm left with is pi, except I'm going to remember that because it's underneath the x-axis, it's really going to be considered negative pi. So area underneath the x-axis is considered negative area, which is a little bit strange at first, but it's not that big of a deal. Okay, let's take a look at uh, C. C says, find the area under the curve from 2 to 5. So I'm going to start at 2, I'm going to end at 5, 
and this is bound by the x-axis as well. And what I see here is that we have a trapezoid. And because we have a trapezoid, I'm going to use the trapezoid formula, which is area equals one-half height times the sum of the bases. Now the height of this trapezoid is three units. This smaller of the two bases is two units. And the longer of the two bases is four units. So what we end up with is one half of three times six. Three times six is 18 and half of that is nine. Now this time the area is going to be positive because it's above the x-axis. So I'm going to write positive 9 in this trapezoid. Okay, moving to part D, it says find the area under the curve of F starting at 0 and ending at 5. Well, we already have from 2 to 5 done, so now we just have to capture this little region right here, which is again a quarter circle. But this time the quarter circle is above the x-axis, so the area is going to be positive. So this guy right here is pi, and then if I go from 0 all the way to 5, it's going to be the sum of those two regions, which would be pi plus 9. Or 9 plus pi, it doesn't matter. Addition is commutative, so the order doesn't make a difference. And moving to question E, now we're looking at the area under the curve from negative 5 to 5. So this is essentially the whole, the whole region. Um, so I need to find this little last section over here, which again is a trapezoid. This time it is oriented horizontally like this. So I'm going to be using the area formula for a trapezoid, which is going to be one half the height times the sum of the bases again. Now the height of this trapezoid from top to bottom base is two. And then the lower or the shorter of the two bases is also two. And the longer base is three. Now the two and the two are going to cancel out. So all we're really left with is but because this area is underneath the x-axis or this region is underneath, I'm going to put negative 5. And to answer this particular question, I need to add up all the areas, all those regions that take me from negative 5 to 5. So the first thing that I notice is that the negative pi and the pi are going to cancel each other out and that I've got a negative 5 and a 9 left over, which is going to give me a net area of 4. Now some students in the past, when they see a question like this, they'll start by finding all of the areas immediately and then they'll answer the questions afterwards. But then there's other students who want to just take each question as it comes. It really doesn't make a difference to me, but I just wanted to share that with you in case that's something that seemed appealing to you. So in summary, this was a lesson on definite integrals and definite integrals represent the area under a curve on a specified interval.